In this video, we're going to show you how to remove your existing pump. If you are in the U.S., you're probably going to have a pump that looks like that, and it's an MW pump. We're going to show you how to remove it and how to install your built M pump. So before we remove the pump, we need to set our timing with the old pump in. So to do that, we're going to come over here to the crank. And you need a either a 1 1 16th or if you have American or if it's supposed to be a 27 and what you want to do is put the socket down here on the crank and you're gonna turn always turn clockwise and you're gonna turn until you get to 10 degrees after top dead center which you can see down there okay if you're not sure what stroke you're on you can remove the oil fill cap and you'll see that the lobes on the valves are pointing up. That one's pointing a little bit to the side, and that one's pointing up. That means that you're on the right stroke. Okay. Next, to remove the, the pump is actually quite simple. You really only need two or three tools. So you're gonna need a 17 millimeter to remove the hard lines on each one of the barrels up here. Some people like to remove them, or not remove them, but just loosen them up there on the injectors. That gives you some, some wiggle room. Next, on the MW pump, you have this oil feed, okay? You're gonna remove it, just take this bolt out, and you're not gonna use that bolt anymore. Next, on the pump, it's mounted to the block with three 13 millimeter nuts, and they just come off with a 13 millimeter. What I like to use is a ratcheting wrench. So you just put that on, and away you go. Same thing on the back, same thing on the bottom. And a lot of people think that you have to remove the oil filter housing, but you don't, okay? The way that you get it off is there is a bracket on the back, which looks like this, and it goes down here, inside there. So all you need to do is remove the 13 millimeter there, and there's one above it, and then wiggle the bracket out, and it's held on this uh, part of the bracket holds on to that screw that you can see back there. And once you take that off, the pump will come free. You still have to wiggle it a bit, but it'll come out, and that way you don't have to remove the oil filter housing. This pump doesn't have a lift pump on it, um, but it'll have a hard line. I believe it's a 17 millimeter nut right here that you're gonna loosen. That has a line that comes up here to your fuel filter. So you'll loosen that. And then right here on the front, you're gonna loosen this, also 17 millimeter, which is your fuel inlet. And then on the back, you have this one back there, which is also 17 millimeter. So you just remove all of those, and you're gonna have this throttle linkage. It's gonna be uh, up here, and you're just gonna put a flat screwdriver in there and kind of pry and wiggle it out to where you can get it free. Once you've done that, that's everything that's holding the injection pump into place and your pump is timed at the time that we want which is 10 degrees after top dead center so now you're just going to wiggle out your pump so you pull it back pull it up and Now, sometimes this piece will come out with the pump, sometimes it'll stay in there. This is a spline gear that attaches like this. So I would just like to put it back in, it's easier that way. You're going to take off this paper gasket. Okay, this one's torn. You throw that away. 
Then you want to get, you want to clean off that surface real well so that there's nothing on it. So get a rag, clean it off. Of course, I'm just doing this quick for a demonstration, but make sure you clean that real good. Spray some brake fluid or car cleaner if you want. Even get a brush and clean it. You just want that flat to where it seals well. Next, we're ready for installation. So you're gonna get a built injection pump that looks like this. This is how I ship them. Up here, you have a gasket. Okay, so you're just gonna put this uh, on the block over here like we just showed you. And tape to the pump itself right here. This is a plug for your normal oil feed over here. The M pump you can see on the front, it gets its oil through here from the engine. So it doesn't need a separate feed line. So you're just gonna take this off and you're gonna plug it so that it's not squirting oil at you. And next, to time this pump, you take off this screw. It's with a six millimeter, but it should already be loose. And inside here, we're gonna spin this until we see a green line. So we're just gonna put, this is a 19 millimeter, or you can use a crescent, we're just gonna turn the pump. Let's see if I can turn it by hand. Okay, you get the idea. And we're gonna turn until in here we see a green line. One second. So you can see inside there, sorry the lighting's not the greatest, you can see there's a green line in paint, okay? Now, naturally you can see the line kind of moved up and you can't see it very well through the hole. The way that the cam uh, sits on these is it doesn't want to sit where that green line is. So just get it as close as you can and on the front of the pump you see that these are very wide. That's so that you have space to twist and turn to the position that you want. So in our case, I don't know if you can still see, the green line is a little bit up. So what we want to do is install the pump like this so that we can rotate it up to get that little green marker right in the middle. You want to remove these while you have it off. The plugs on the, the pump and the feed on these M pumps is on the front. Install it into that gear. It's already inside there, that spline. And up here you can see it's all the way making contact at the top. We're going to wiggle it in. There it is. And now you can see we can rotate it. And we're going to rotate it until that little green marker. Let me see if I can get low enough to where you can see it. That little green mark is right there in the middle. Can't really see it, but yeah, you can see it there. So um, next what you're gonna do is start tightening down these nuts and you're gonna put them as tight as you can with this one that's close to you that you have access to. There you can see the green mark is still in the middle. Uh, we've tightened that. OK, 
Okay, now you just get your nut and do the same on the bottom and the back once they're all pretty tight. Then you go ahead and tighten them all the way. Um, next, these hard lines on, on this uh, engine, these hard lines, they're gonna be a little bit different position because of the, the way they are with the end pump. You can just bend these. Um, best way to do it is just try to bend them with your hands. You want this as straight as possible where it's not an angle, you want it pointing down. And if you're really having trouble, you can use a screwdriver, you know, push and pull, or not a screwdriver, a, a socket. Push and pull however you need just to get these lined up. Uh, then you'll take off the plastic caps that they have on them. And you'll screw those on. They come with the lift pump is a little bit different design. And I include this barb right here, which is an eight millimeter. And so you'll just get a piece of rubber hose like this. that goes from your fuel filter up here. This is the in of your fuel filter. Okay, you'll just get a rubber hose. Um, this one's way longer than it needs to be, but just so you can get the idea, we'll just slide a, a rubber hose on there. Get some clamps on slide that all the way back but you get the idea then you're going to tighten this this like i mentioned is going to be the plug over there and then this over here which is your um in that comes so your fuel you hook a, a hose right here from your tank it comes out through here it goes into your fuel filter it gets cleaned and it comes out through this and this goes on the front of your pump over there and then your same return line. You have to forgive me that my hoses all look different. Um, this is just the way this 617 engine came. But this uh, hose back here, you're gonna plug it in using the same bolt. Um, this is actually a valve where it has to be pressurized. But you just use the same one, screw it in the back, tighten all your, your lines. And what I like to do is just finger tighten them. You can either do that here or up on the injectors. You're just gonna finger tighten everything and then crank it to let the air out. And that will, when you see um, the fuel starts coming out through, through these hard lines, then you know that you're getting fuel to the injectors and you can go ahead and tighten them down with your 17 millimeter. Put your plug back on this. You can check it before, just to make sure that green line is still centered. This line up here to the ALDA, um, you're gonna have a hose that comes from here and it's a boost reference. So you wanna get wherever your turbocharger is coming from, whether you have an intercooler or uh, just a, a line coming around the back from here, it can go to the intake manifold, whatever you want. This just needs to be a boost reference. What I like to use is one of these. Um, this is just a simple lift it's an electric uh, lift pump, helper pump. I don't know what you want to call it. It's not enough to replace that. It's only like seven PSI or something. But what I like to use it for is to put it on here. On your normal uh, 617, you have like a plunger here that you can pump, a hand pump, and you pump it forever, it seems like. And that pushes the fuel out. I've never really liked that. And besides, these don't come with that. This is much quicker and cheaper. So basically all you do is you have this in line with your fuel. You can just cut a piece of hose and put it right, put it right before your lift pump, whatever you want. Um, all it needs is positive and negative. And what it does, it pushes, it sucks fuel from your tank or your fuel source and it pressurizes the whole system. So it comes in through here, goes in your fuel filter, pressurizes it, fills it up with fuel sends it into your pump, goes inside there, comes through the rear, gets all the injector lines, full, um, helps bleed out the air. You'll still have some air, you'll crank for a little bit, but it helps a lot. So I'll show you what that's like. Um, you just put one end, I usually just stick it on the block, or you can put it on the negative of the battery, whatever you want. Positive side over here, to get it clicking away. So you just leave that for about 10 seconds is usually all it takes until your return. I don't know if you can see this, but over here I just have a jug of, of fuel. 
and when your return line starts seeping out fuel, that means that you are there. You can take it off. So next what we want to do is we're going to continue to bleed the system of air. These are loose, and so I'm going to crank the engine a little bit to, until I see diesel coming out of there. So there you can see it's actually spraying up diesel, so they're ready to be tightened. Put your 17 on there, tighten each one of the lines. Okay, now what we want to do is crank it a little until we start seeing smoke come out the back of the exhaust. That means that there's enough fuel where it could actually run. So you're just going to crank it until you see smoke coming out. Okay, you can see there's a nice good bunch of smoke coming out. So now it's ready to run. If you have glow plugs, go ahead and connect them. Um, I just have them on a wire here, but you can also use starter fluid. You can't use them both together. You got to use one or the other. Um, if you want to use starter fluid, what you do is you just do into the intake manifold, or if you have a turbo on it, you're going to put it into the turbo, but you just do a couple spurts. Okay. And then you go ahead and start. What I like to do when you use starter fluid is push the throttle a little. Thanks for watching.